What's up guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna go over this text effect that a lot of editors use. It looks pretty cool and it's there's a lot of ways you can make it unique, make it creative and do your own twist on it. So this is the example I'm gonna show you how to do today. <laughs> Alright, let's jump into After Effects. So what you first want to do is create a new text layer. Go up here, make a space and write your text. So for my example, I'm going to use uh, Pierre Born as an example. There's a lot of fonts you can use to make this effect look cool. This is the website that I use to find a lot of cool fonts. In my example, I'm going to use uh, the Unquiet Spirit font because I think it looks pretty cool with all the different angles and shapes that the letters have. So I think the effect looks pretty cool using this font. But just be creative, find your own font that you like to use. So once you have your text written, you're going to want to center your font a bit. So right here is good. And then you're going to want to duplicate your text. So make sure you have your text selected and press Ctrl D. So now you have two text layers and you can hide the bottom one right here because this is just, just a reference. Click the top layer and go into your effects and type element. This is a plugin uh, by Video Copilot. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to purchase it. So after you apply the element plugin to your layer, go to the custom layers, click custom text and mask and make sure half layer one is selected to your first text. So this one is going to be right here, the number two, Pierre Bourne, right here. And now you're, now you're going to see that text is going to show up. After this, click on scene setup and now you're going to see that the text is in the 3D space in the element 3D window. So once you're in this window, what you can do is click on the presets on the left side right here. And you're not going to have this uh, shader pack, but in my example, I use this shader pack to get the colors I wanted. So just search for this on Google and you'll probably find it. What you want to do is choose a bevel type that you want. There's a lot of different options here that you can choose. In my opinion, I think the blue one right here looks pretty cool. So I'm going to use this one as a base because it has a lot of layers and extrusions that look pretty cool. And after that, these are your elements that you can change color on and make different extrusions. So if you don't have this pack, you can go into your physical right here and here's a few materials you can use. So in my example, I want to go to my Elite Shaders pack and find this magenta metal right here and put this on shiny light. And after that, I want to go to this one right here, Northern Lights, to create some contrast. Light pink with the dark purple looks really cool in my opinion. So this is what we have right now looks pretty nice. What I'm gonna do now is take this northern lights and expand the extrusion right here. Put it on like something between 5 and 6. You don't want it to be too extruded. Uh, so I think 5.5 is gonna be a pretty good base to work with. You can change the different extrusion right here. You can make, make this one go bigger or you can have this one go more out like this. So I'm gonna have this one at about 3 on the extrusion and then after that I'm gonna click the OK button right here once, once we're happy with what we got. So you can see right here we took a little bit too much of an extrusion so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna change that back to something like, like 4 because I think 5 is a little bit too much. So I press OK again. That looks a lot better. So now once you got your text you can duplicate your layer once again and this is going to be your background layer. There's a lot of animations you can do with your letters. So the first thing that I'm going to do, keyframe the rota rotation of our text. So what you want to do is go to group 1, click on particle replicator, click the rotation and once you're here you can click the keyframe on. So I'm going to keyframe my X rotation to go about one second in, make it from, from minus 30 and go down to let's say plus 20. Let's see how this looks. That looks pretty cool. So let's highlight our keyframes and click the F9 button to ease them. And let's see how this looks. So that is pretty cool. If the if we want to change this later, we can just go back. So now to add some more dynamic to our animation, I want each individual letter to dissolve, go away from each other a little bit. So to do this, we want to go back to our group one, click on particle look, go down to multi object and click the enable multi object button right here. So now you see all, all of these points come up. And what we want to look at 
get is this one right here. It's gonna be under rotation, the fourth one right here. So what we want to do now is go to a point where, where we want the letters to start dissolving. So I'm gonna go about halfway. So let's say, let's put a keyframe right here and go up to the end of the clip and put it at a decent mark, let's say, let's say 55. I think 55 is pretty cool. You can see that they start to kind of dissolve. And I'm also gonna go highlight these keyframes and click the F9 button to ease ease them. And another thing I wanna do is click the displace and keyframe right at the middle and go to the end and put this just a little bit up to space the letters out just a tiny bit and ease ease these as well. So let's see how our animation is looking. That's a little bit too much, let's put it at 0.04. So now that we have this. So what we want to do now is do adjustments to our background layer. So just enable this one. And now we can see that this is just a stale version of the one we made earlier. So let's go to the effects panel and search for the Colorama plugin. Drag that on. Now you can see there's all kinds of colors, but we want to make sure that the colors match our color theme. So go to Colorama, go on output cycle, and you can see there's a lot of presets here that you can use for your text. Just it depends on what colors you used earlier. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the RGB and make these a little bit more purple slash pinkish match our theme. So once you made some adjustments to the colors of the Colorama that you want. Mine looks like this right now. You can move these wheels to change the colors how you want the wheel to look. So now you're gonna see our background looks like this. So once you've done that, what we can do is add some glow to our background. You want the glow to on the background to be a, a very vibrant. So I'm gonna keep mine at two and take the glow width up just a tiny bit. So like this is gonna be fine. And at this point, you want to have the top layer showing so you can see what you're working on. So it looks like this right now. And now what we can do is go to our effects panel and search for the optics compensation effect and drag this on the bottom layer. So now we can click the reverse lens distortion and put the uh, field of view pretty high. So I'm gonna have mine start at 125. And now what you want to do is have the optic compensation keyframe so that it has a bouncy movement. So now I'm gonna make a keyframe right here on the field of view. You know, I'm gonna go a little bit in the beginning and put it higher, so like this, and then make it go a little bit more inwards, like this, towards the end. And now you're just gonna want to do the same thing on the top layer with the optics compensation. So what we can do is copy our optics compensation and paste it on the top layer. So now you can see it is tracked to the same movement as your top one, but we don't want it to be exactly on top. So what we, what we want to do is go back and just put the values down a little bit. So this top one for me is gonna be at around 105 and then make it go, go up to 115. And then at the end, make it go back to, let's say 80, I think 80 is gonna look good. So now this is what we have. Looks pretty cool. Let's actually just add a little bit more glow to our characters. So go back, go to your effects and search for glow, sapphire glow and put this on top. And this looks way too bright. So let's take it down just a tiny bit to about 1.1. I think 1.1 is fine. So this is what we have so far. Now you can see our optics compensation movement is very robotic, so we want to make sure that our keyframes are easiest. So just mark them and press F9. Do the same with the background layer. So what I want to do now is add some rays to our bottom layer. So go to your effects, find sapphire rays. Put this on your background layer, which is the second one. And you're gonna see it starts to like come towards you a little bit more. So let's put this at about 0.15. Looks pretty cool, so you can see that it sort of shines and has a ray on it. And once you've done that, you can go to your effects and search for Sapphire Distort. So now we're pretty much done with our effects. I'm gonna actually change the rotation of the top layer again. So it all it all comes down to trial and error, guys. Just see what looks good and just change it if it doesn't look good. So I'm gonna add some more rotation to our top layer. At the beginning, I want to keyframe the Y rotation as well. Put this at about plus 15 and go a few more frames forwards, change it back to zero. Then I'm gonna have this one a little bit more up like this. Have this at minus 50 and have it go back to 20 at here towards the end. I'm gonna keyframe the Y rotation. 
I like them, press F9, and this is how it looks. That just creates a little bit more movement in our text. After that, I want to highlight all three of our layers, right click and pre-comp them. So this is something that I like, I like to do, I want to put some CC scale white to my text. Put the degree at the angle that you want. For my example, I'm gonna do about 200. Keyframe the stretch at the beginning. Have, have it as you want. I'm gonna have mine at 2.5. You, you don't want to overdo this step, guys. Just have it a little very subtle. And then we'll go a few more frames forward and reset the stretch. So this is how it's gonna look. So once you've come this far, here is the final product. So just remember guys, it's all about experimentation. Try your own different variations of optics compensation. Ch change the colorama, change the font. It's all up to you guys. Just use your creativity and just do what you think looks good. Thanks for watching guys. If you want another tutorial, just leave a comment what you want to learn next. Make sure to subscribe and follow my Instagram down below. And I'll see you next time.